Right. Also at the SNP conference in Aberdeen is the Scottish Government's Cabinet Secretary for Constitution, External Affairs and Culture. That, of course, is Angus Robertson. Thanks very much indeed for joining us this morning, Mr Robertson. Morning, Martin. Um, look, a load of interviews already been done in anticipation of this conference and during it. We've heard from the First Minister this morning. I don't want to cover too much of the same ground. Let, 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 let me start with this. Lots of talk already about Labour in this conference. They're very much the party in your crosshairs at the moment. Seems a bit odd, given they're the party of opposition rather than the party of government. What's going on? Are you a bit rattled at their success at the moment? Um, it's not at the forefront of my mind. Um, when we come to the next... Uh, UK general election. Uh, the last remaining Tory seats in Scotland uh, see the major challenge coming from the SNP. Uh, the Labour Party only has one seat in Scotland. Uh, so I'm very focused on making Scotland a Tory free uh, country and it's the SNP that is best placed to defeat the Tories. That's where my mind is if you're asking me about the party politics but at the present time I'm, I'm thinking about bigger things which is how can we deliver on the result of last year's Scottish Parliament election when we saw the biggest majority returned to Holyrood with a mandate to hold a referendum and as a Democrat I respect that re election result. I want to deliver on that election result and I want the people of Scotland regardless of whether they are yes voters, no voters or undecided voters to be able to have their say in a referendum next autumn and of course we could do that very easily if the UK government um, signed up to the same democratic principles and uh, as their colleagues did in the run up to 2014, agreed with the Scottish government that we can go forward with a referendum, use what's called a section 30 order and frankly yeah. get on with it. Unfortunately they've been blocking that and that's why things sure. are now in the Supreme Court. You don't need the longest memory I think to cast your mind back to that election last year when Nicola Sturgeon, I'm sure I'm right in saying, said this was not a, a, an, an election based on independence or a referendum, actually it was a Covid recovery election and she said that if you were if you were concerned about Covid recovery but on balance the Unionist still vote SNP but now we're using all those votes to say it's a case for a referendum, right? Well, the referendum was front and centre, both of the campaign and the manifesto. We can have a number of policy issues and areas in a manifesto at the same time. It's not that difficult uh, to do. Not taking any of the votes uh, as a mandate for independence per se, but as a mandate for a referendum. And then those people, whether they, as I've already said, are yes supporters, no supporters or undecideds, can cast their vote in the way that they see fit, okay. surely all of us as Democrats sign up to the same principles which is if we elect a government to do something they should be able to get on with it. Unfortunately the election losers in last year's election campaign, the Labour Party that lost, the Tories that lost, the Liberal Democrats that lost are the people who are saying that we can't decide on our own future in Scotland. That's okay. not how normal functioning democracies work. So you are in the process we are told of setting out how an independent Scotland would work. We've seen two I think of your papers. We were expecting to see I think them all across the summer but the, 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 one of the big ones, the, the, the one on the economy, is coming out, we're told, this week after your, your party conference. Tell me this, have, have the dramatic economic events of the past couple of weeks given you doubts at all, given you pause for thought and, and, and a chance to reconsider that your policy is the best policy? Have you discussed changing direction at all and this policy of sterlingisation, keeping the pound for years and years yeah. until you can get your own central bank and your own currency sorted out? Well, of course, the people who have been crashing uh, sterling, the people who are planning to drive debt uh, are up to record levels, the people who have been threatening uh, mortgage rate rises, which will make them unaffordable for many people, have been threatening pensions or the UK Tory government. Uh, so if anything, it has steeled the resolve of those of us who believe that the best place people to make decisions about Scotland's economic, social and political future are people here in Scotland. Well, well, are, are we they really the... shouldn't let others that we haven't... Okay. Well, yes we, ha yes, we are. Um, because that is the normal state of sure. play for normal countries and Indeed. In, in the prospectus which you mentioned Martin and I, I, would, I would encourage everybody to have a look at it online via the Scottish Government website www.gov.scot uh, the first paper points out and compares Scotland's situation with all of our neighbouring nations with Ireland, Iceland, Norway, okay. but Sweden, let me ask you, Finland, Denmark and others and do you know what all of them have in common? They are all wealthier, fairer and more successful countries. Let me 
me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. And frankly, we should get on with it. Once again, you, you, I mean, you, you, you rightly point out that, that you know it was it was the government's policy that caused the markets to take fright last week. Leave politics out of this for a second. Let's look at the systems, because once again we saw the Treasury machinery, the Bank of England machinery, crank up into gear and actually, like in 2008, pull this country back from the economic precipice. Which system? is better for our country now. That system that has done that more than once, or your system where we don't have our own currency, we don't have our own lender of last resort for years, we don't even have control over our own interest rates? Well, I, I, I refer you to the answer I gave a moment ago. Have any of our neighbouring countries been suffering the same kind of economic shock as the UK has in the last couple of weeks? No, they haven't. And the reason why they haven't is they haven't been pursuing the idiotic policies of the UK government. What do they have at their disposal? They have the normal levers, levers of small and medium-sized independent countries. Well, most of them have central the banks, for example, the UK. which that we wouldn't the have. Question. Most of them have central banks, which we yeah, well, wouldn't I, have. I, I, no, I, I'm, yes, yes, which we will have. Um, after we vote for independence, and that, and that is set up. I appreciate, Martin, you're very keen to get a sneak preview uh, and an exclusive on this show about the forthcoming uh, prospectus paper by the Scottish Government. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm sorry about that. All right. but what I isn't can it, isn't say it a shame terms that your delegates, your yes, party members, yes, won't have a chance to discuss it? In, look, all, all of the papers that are coming out are on the issues that really matter to people in Scotland. I'll be talking in a few minutes to the conference about the papers that have been published already and what we should be doing to explain that to the people of Scotland. The remainder of the papers, you have rightly said, are going to be coming out in the weeks and the months uh, ahead. No doubt I and colleagues will be back on, on your programme to talk about their contents. To go back to your original question, have recent events made us think about how should Scotland deal better with the kind of economic shocks that have been in significant part caused by the UK government? Absolutely. What does it make us think? It makes us think we need to get on with okay, this. Let's clear. not be governed by have... Tory governments sure. at the present time, but let's not be governed for Tory governments you've, ever you've again. Said, you've let's said that already. Let, let me ask you another Scottish question. With all the powers. Let me ask you another question about finance. If the pound... Please is tanking and if the UK in your opinion is tanking along with it in terms of its international um, in terms of international opinion why tie yourself to the pound why not join the euro if you're so keen to get back into the EU well I, again you're asking me to go into the details of the forthcoming economy paper which I'm not going to do but the plan in general terms is that we establish a Scottish currency as soon as is practicably uh, possible after a yes vote and after, after we've become an independent country and that is what other European countries have done including a number within the European Union so we'd be no different to other countries say as Sweden okay listen if, let me ask you this then if, if you don't win the Supreme Court case can you promise that you, would, that, that you would take an independent Scotland back into the EU? Because the EU wouldn't have you, would they, if you were claiming victory off the back of this de facto referendum? They wouldn't pay any attention to that at all, would they? No, it's, you, it, it's correct to say it's very important that we uh, secure a Scottish independence vote in a legal and recognisable way, and that is by using the democratic means at our disposal. It is not the Scottish Government that is putting impediments in place to the people of Scotland to be able to determine no, no, our that, own that's future. Fine. It is but, the but I'm, all UK I'm asking Tory you is, party. if you, you well, don't no, it's want not fine. to use I'm the de facto referendum it's, 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 process, but if you are forced to use that, because that is your plan B, or plan C, whichever one it is, uh, if you are forced into that, can you, as part of that, promise entry to the EU? On the, I'm asking that on the basis that, 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 that the EU, I would suggest, are unlikely to recognise that election as a de facto referendum. I, I'm entirely focused on securing Scottish independence in a way that will be recognised both by the, the rest of the United Kingdom, the European Union and the wider international community. You're right to stress how important that is and it's extremely important to me. Uh, forgive me, I, I understand why you want to ask questions about plans B, C, D and, and all of that. As the government minister with responsibility with things, I'm focused on plan A, which is we've been voted into office to deliver right. a referendum. We're working towards doing that next autumn. Okay. I'm helping helping produce the prospectus papers and the run-up to that and making sure that we have the legislative and organisational preparations in place right. to hold that referendum next autumn. We I wish the, all Democrats would sign up We haven't seen your finance paper. We haven't heard your answer necessarily to that because it's not your preferred option. Let me ask you this. Is the 
NHS in Scotland failing? I ask you because they we're meant to COVID recovery, according to the Cabinet Secretary for Health, is, is doing well, but the statistics tell a different story, don't they? You're missing A&E targets, 70% rise in people paying for private surgery, 12,000 staff left the NHS last year, a record high. Those who are still working are balloting on strike action. Is the health service failing just now in Scotland? Well, the, the, the health service is under massive pressure here, as it is, frankly, everywhere else, because we've gone through uh, the biggest uh, public health emergency in a century. So, yes, the public health system in Scotland, in the rest of the UK, frankly, the rest of the world is all having to cope with the kind of pressures that you've just outlined there. How is the Scottish government reacting? It is reacting by trying to uh, leverage in as much resource within the constraints of the devolved settlement uh, to be able to uh, deal with the challenges but, but that you outlined. But we hear COVID recovery is going uh, is well. Easy? Those no, statistics don't back it, it up, do they? Well, I think, frankly speaking, if you compare Scotland's health statistics with the rest of the United That's Kingdom... That's of no comfort uh, I if think you're waiting we're for doing a cancer better. operation. I think... No, but I think the context is important. I've already acknowledged that the pressures are huge, and I think reasonably-minded people will understand the reasons why. I'm just making the point that in the circumstances that we find ourselves, if you look at the comparative statistics, the health service is doing better than the rest of the United Kingdom. It has to do better. Of course it does. We all depend on our public health system. Uh, but it's far better that we have a government in Scotland making uh, better decisions about our health system than leaving it up to people in other parts of the UK who we haven't elected to do it. And that's all the right. way we're governed in so many parts of our day and daily lives. All right, Angus Robertson, I'm on my way up to Aberdeen in about 15 minutes when this programme's off air. I'm sure we'll carry on this conversation there. Thanks, meantime, for your time on the we Sunday will. show. We will. I'll see you in Aberdeen. Morning. I'm sure you will. Right.